I will look at the Hopito's rule. I don't know if you can pronounce it, others pronounce it as Hopito's rule. So look at it, we've looked at very interesting complex questions. So what is it actually? So Hopito's rule basically tells us that if you are determining the limit um, of, let's say, x uh, approaches, let's take c, and then of a function f of x divided by another function g of x. So what it tells us is the limit there is as equal to the limit as x approaches c even after differentiating the function on top divided by the derivative again of another function. So I'll look at some interesting examples uh, of certain things that we can solve using other methods before I come back to solve these interesting ones. So let me just give you a few uh, examples we can have a look at. Um, I believe we already know that the limit for x approaching, if you can have x approaching negative 3, in a case where you have x to the power 2 minus 9, and then over x plus 3. In this case, you know how to go about this already, right? You know that you can't distribute directly because you're going to get this part being 0. So options usually apply to indeterminate forms. So therefore, we're going to have the limit as x approaches negative 3. We know that we're supposed to expand the top part. It becomes x minus 3 because of a difference of two squares. And then we've got x plus 3. So you know at the end of it, all that is going to cancel, right? And then you plug in. So you see that your value is going to be negative 6, right, as your answer. Now, Optos rule, what does Optos rule tell us? Optos rule, instead of doing all that, this is equal to negative 6. Now, according to Optos rule, we are supposed to differentiate whatever we have. Let's try that. So if we are to differentiate the top part, x squared minus 9 is going to give us 2x, right? The denominator, the derivative of all that is going to be 1. And then if you plug in, you see that this is going to give us negative 6 as well. This is what Optos rule tell us. Okay? Now, let me give you some couple of some more interesting questions just before we go back to our questions uh, consider a case where we have the limit as uh, x approaches 0 and then you have sine 3x over 5x to the power 3 minus 4x as well so in this case you know what if you have to plug in a 0 and the denominator you're going to get a 0 so it's indeterminate so let's try to apply the optos rule of course, there's another method that you can apply under trig, but let me use Optus rule in this case. So the limit as x approaches 0, the derivative of sine, some of you should already know, derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. So derivative of cosine is, of sine is cosine, so cosine 3x, and then you know when you're differentiating, you have to multiply by the, the derivative of whatever is there, right? So the derivative here is 3, so 3 cosine of 3x over, on the bottom, if we differentiate whatever we have, we're going to have 15x squared and then minus 4. At this point, is it true that if we had to substitute 0, it's going to be eliminated? Are we going to have an indeterminate form? No. That's going to be 0. Now, if you put a 0, I is 3x there. It's going to give us a 0, which is going to be cosine of 0 is a 1. So you have 1, 3 multiplied by 1 over negative 4. So the answer just becomes negative 3 over 4. Okay? This is how helpful Optos law is when it comes to looking at different questions. And then I can give you one more interesting form, which also is requires a lot of work because it requires long division. So if you are to determine the limit here, applying Optos, Optos rule, you are going to have the limit as, you know, if you plug in, of course, the 2 is going to be indeterminate, right? So applying up those rule x approaches 2, differentiate the top part, you're going to have 3x squared. The top down, you're just going to have 1. So which is as good as you substituting 2 squared becomes 4 times 3, 12. Which you can answer by using the other method. Okay, so now that we are introduced to Ropito's rule, let's look at these questions now. So... Let me start with first of what we have on top here. Okay, so I'll start with what is on the left. So how do you approach this one? How do you basically get to solve this using Optus rule? 
and why are we doing that? So we know that if we are to substitute in the, in the equations we have and plug in 0, we are basically going to have e to the power 0 minus 1 over 0 squared plus 0. So the top part of this is going to have e to the power 0 is just going to be 1 minus 1, so 0 over 0. So you can't determine that. This is indeterminate, right? So let's try to apply Oppito's rule by differentiating the top part. I hope you know how to differentiate the exponential already. e to the power x differentiating is maintain e to the power x and multiply by the derivative of a power. So this implies if we had a 2x there, we would end up multiplying by 2. Equally, if we had x squared, we end up multiplying by 2x because that would be the derivative in such a case. So in this case, when you've got just the power x, the derivative is always going to be 1. So it doesn't matter how many times you get to differentiate e to the power x, it will remain as it is. So we have a limit as x approaches 0. So after differentiating, we are going to have e to the power x over the constant will disappear. The top bottom we are going to have 2x plus 1 after differentiation. Are we able to start distribute? At this point, we know at least if we distribute, we are not going to have anything and indeterminate, right? So therefore, we have e to the power 0 over 2 multiplied by 0 plus 1. e to the power 0 is just the 1. And then you have a 1, which is equal to a 1. So that is how you go about it. So if seen Optus Rose, you have to determine the value of an indeterminate form. Okay. Let's look at the second one now. <coughs> which I'm taking to be more interesting. Okay, so equally if we try to s uh, substitute whatever we have, let's say we plug in, so 2 sine 0, obviously you already know that sine 0 is, if you look at the graph of a sine function, it starts from there, right? So sine 0 is just a 0. Cosine starts from there, that's why cosine of 0 is a 1. So let's try to differentiate this, because we know if we just substitute directly, if you put a 0 there and a 0 there, you are going to end up with zeros. Equally on the bottom, zero, zero. So you end up with zero over zero. So that's not what we want. So let's try to differentiate. What's the derivative of sine again? So the derivative of sine is cosine, right? Okay. You differentiate whatever is in the brackets and multiply by the coefficient. So the derivative of x is one. One times two is just two. Derivative of sine is cosine of x. Minus. Derivative of sine again is cosine 2x. Now I have to multiply by the derivative what is in the brackets. In this, in that case, it's a 2. Over. On the bottom, differentiate, differentiating what we have, x minus sine of x. x is going to give us a 1. And then sine of x is going to be cosine of x because the derivative of x is just a 1. So no difference will be seen there. Okay, let's move on. So, I don't know why I've omitted the limit, but the limit still applies. So the limit as x approaches 0. So can we determine the limit from that point? So let's try to distribute. If we put a 0 there and a 0 there, you're going to have 2 here because cosine of 0 is 1. So you're going to end up with just 1 times 2, 2. The other part as well, 2, which is going to be a 0 again on the top. On the bottom, what basically is going to come out there, if you plug in cosine of 0, you're going to get a 1. 1 minus 1 as well will be a 0. So we're trying to avoid all that because this is still indeterminate. We can try again. So you can actually continue differentiating as many times until, until we are able to get the answer. So what is the derivative of cosine? The derivative of cosine is going to be sine. So 2 sine of x minus there again derivative of what's in the brackets is 2 times this 2 will give us a 4 so we have 4 sine of 2x and then on the bottom the constant will go now we have the derivative of cosine derivative of cosine is negative sine right derivative of cosine is negative sine so multiply by that negative that is already there it's going to be positive so 
going to have a positive sign of x. I don't know why I didn't think about that as I was doing that on top. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this is negative. This will now become end up a positive because derivative of this is going to be a negative sign. As we move on to the next step, how are we able to distribute? So sine 0 already is a 0, so that's already indeterminate. We can't s simplify that. Let's try one more time. The limit as x approaches 0. And then derivative of sine is cosine, just positive signs. Cosine, so it's negative cosine of x. Derivative of sine 2x is going to be positive cosine x now 2 multiplied by the 4 will now be 8 so we're going to have plus 8 cosine of 2x over derivative of sine of x is going to be cosine of x at this point we know if we put in on the bottom it's not going to be indeterminate anymore because cosine of 0 is a 1 so if we are to distribute now at this point where there is x we put zeros right so what would mean we're going to be determining the cosine of zero and cosine of zero so those are ones so you end up with negative two plus eight on top over one which is now that is a positive six right so your six is the answer to that question and then let me give you some some more the ones that i removed at first so that is, for example, the limit as x approaches infinity for e to the power x over x squared. How would you handle that one? So one thing that you know there is for you to determine the limit, try to substitute. If you try to substitute there, you're going to have e to the power infinity over x infinity to the power 2. Now you know for you to understand what e to the power infinity is, you have to look at the sketch of e to the power infinity. So this is the way it basically works. Cut one there. So when you say e to the power infinity, that's a value of x, right? So as you go towards the right hand side, you're seeing that it's also going up and up and up. So therefore on top there, the answer is infinity. And you know infinity to any power, obviously it's just infinity. But you can't d d divide infinity by infinity, obviously. These are not numbers, so you can't predict, right? So, <coughs> at least we know that if you are to have a constant divided by infinity, it approaches zero. If you are to have infinity divided by any constants, you are going to know, see that the answer is just infinity. So, if we can have that form, it's better. So, let's try to differentiate what we have. So, the limit as x approaches infinity. If the power x, we've already talked about how to differentiate that, it remains the same. Because multiplying by the derivative of x, which is 1, will not change anything. Going to the bottom, derivative of x squared is 2x. At this point, can we substitute? We still know if we substitute on the bottom, we are still going to have 2 multiplied by infinity, which will still be infinity. The top part will also still give us infinity. So, one to remain with a constant at least. So x approaches infinity, differentiate again, e to the power x remain as it is, so 2x will now become a 2. This way we know that we can now substitute, because we know if we can have e to the power infinity over a 2, you know that e to the power infinity is infinity. Now on the bottom, you are dividing a constant by into a, an infinity. Since infinity is on top, we know that its answer becomes infinity. If it was the other way around, infinity divided into a constant it's supposed to be zero okay so therefore in this case we're able to determine by using Ropito's rule we can look at one more x approaching infinity so we've seen that Ropito's rule applies in cases where we have in determinant forms Div zero divided by zero infinity by infinity Another, uh, just all avoiding division by zero and many, many other forms. So it helps us go about derivatives that are difficulties using other ways. So, what's the natural log of infinity? So, 
it's much better to understand this if you know how to sketch. So this is how an exponential function behaves. So the natural log is actually kind of like the opposite, more like the diffraction. Cuts one on the x-axis, the other one's on the y-axis. So you see that still even as you're approaching infinity as well, it's also going towards the infinity. Right? This is the natural log of x. It's also going, as you go towards x values increasing, it's also going up. But at a slower rate compared to the exponential. So we're going to have infinity over infinity, which will still be undefined, so we can differentiate. Now, how do you differentiate the natural log of, of x? Okay. So we have to differentiate the top part and then also apply the same concept to to the denominator. So what's the derivative of natural log of x? So we're going to have 1 over x over 1, which is us going to give us 1 over x, right? So we can just say the limit is x approaches 0. It's actually infinity. X approaches infinity for 1 over x. Now you know that whenever you're dividing, whenever it's bottom av, you know it's basically going to be approaching 0. Obviously, right? So you can even know how this graph comes out. As you get to infinity, as the numbers get to increase, you get closer and closer to the x-axis. Okay? So therefore, we can just say 0 is the answer. If we had x on top, you know it's infinity as a result. So this is basically, these are the use cases of the Rupito's rule, and I hope you've understood.